So the National Transportation Safety Board just released the preliminary report for the MiG-23 airshow mishap that happened a couple of weeks ago. Let me read it to you. On August 13th, about 15.15 Eastern Daylight Time, a Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-23 UB, serial number N23 Uniform Bravo, was destroyed when it was involved in an accident near Belleville, Michigan. The pilot and the pilot-rated observer received minor injuries. The airplane was operated as a Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations Part 91 Airshow Exhibition Flight. The flight was performing at the Thunder Over Michigan Air Show held at the Willow Run Airport, three-letter designator YIP, in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The accident flight was scheduled to be the second-to-last act. The accident airplane was a privately owned Russian-designed military fighter airplane that employed variable geometry wings that allowed the wing sweep angle to be changed in flight. The airplane was powered by a single turbojet engine with afterburner capability. The pilot reported that the flight departed from runway 23 at YIP, followed by a right turn to a banana pass, a low-level knife-edge pass, along runway 23. Following the pass, he started banking the airplane and noticed that the engine afterburner did not ignite, and the airspeed began to decrease. He brought the swing wings into the fully forward position, which is 16 degrees of sweep, to increase lift and began troubleshooting the problem. He was actively troubleshooting when the rear seat observer stated that they needed to eject. The pilot reported that he was not ready to eject and was still troubleshooting the problem and maneuvering the airplane towards runway 27 when his ejection seat fired and he was out of the airplane. He stated that if either occupant pulls the ejection handle, both seats eject. The rear seat observer stated that the airplane made a pass along the runway and the plan was to go to the left for another pass followed by a landing. He stated that the engine was not accelerating. He and the pilot had a brief discussion and began to climb up and gain altitude. They determined they had some type of engine problem and needed to get back on the ground. He stated that they determined they did not have sufficient altitude to make it to a runway at the airport. He said they were compressed for time and needed to get out. When asked if he had pulled the ejection seat handles, he stated that he could not specifically remember, but thinks that he would have pulled them. Video evidence indicated that the airplane was in the left bank when the ejection seats fired. The airplane continued in the left bank and descended into the ground about one mile south of the approach end of runway 27 at YIP. The wreckage path was about 600 feet long on a heading of about 035. There was a post-impact explosion and fire. The fuselage section that contained the tail surfaces and engine came to rest adjacent to an apartment building. The remainder of the airplane was fragmented and distributed along the wreckage path. There were no reported injuries on the ground. So coincidentally, I posted an ejection episode the day before this mishap. It was my conversation with John Nickel, author, and also a guy who punched out of a tornado during Desert Storm when he was shot down and later became a POW. And in that episode, John and I talk about command eject, specifically as it applies to tandem seat aircraft. Now, I've also done an episode about an accidental ejection in the F-14. This one happened when a ship driver, a Navy captain, was doing a familiarization hop while the air wing was training out in Fallon, Nevada. And during the course of that demonstration, the captain in the back seat was disoriented, and as he tried to pull himself back into the seat, he grabbed the lower ejection handle and ejected himself out of the airplane. Now, in this case, the command eject handle was in the forward position, which is labeled as pilot, which means if the rear cockpit initiates ejection, the canopy will blow off and only the rear cockpit will go. So that was good in this case because they didn't lose the airplane. But this mishap is different. So let's focus on a few of those details. So first off, the guy in the back is labeled as a pilot rated observer, not just a civilian or a reporter or something. And what I've also seen on social media threads is the guy in the back labeled as a pilot rated observer in the preliminary report was a qualified MiG-23 pilot. In fact, I've seen that he owned his own MiG-23, a single seat version. So this is just a preliminary report, but let's focus on the part right before the ejection where they talk about the exchange between the cockpits. So the first sign of trouble is the afterburner doesn't ignite and the airspeed starts to decrease. The pilot in the front cockpit moves the wings to the fully forward position to increase lift and he starts troubleshooting the problem. So he's troubleshooting. The guy in the back seat, the rear seat observer, states they need to eject. So I don't know on what basis that decision was made. So again, reportedly, the guy in the back seat is a fully qualified MiG-23 pilot. I'm assuming because this is a trainer version of the MiG-23 that he has all the same engine gauges in the rear cockpit that the pilot has in the front cockpit. So maybe he saw something and because of his experience, he believed that he knew as much or more than the guy troubleshooting in the front seat. 
So it goes on to say, the pilot reported that he was not ready to eject and he was still troubleshooting the problem and maneuvering the airplane towards runway 27 when his seat fired. And when the NTSB asked the pilot rated observer, did you pull the handle? His response was they were compressed for time and needed to get out and he could not specifically remember, but thinks that he would have pulled them. So that's not quite a yes, but it's sort of an admission of guilt. So as a career radar intercept officer with nearly 3,000 hours in a variety of tactical aircraft, mostly the F-14, this brings up some red flags with me. So let's go to the training aids. Let's say we're flying around on an F-14 and, and we hear a bang or the airplane rolls off uncommanded. The first question I would ask is the Rio is, do you got it? If the pilot says, yeah, hold on here, then I'm not initiating ejection at that point. And in the F-14 anyway, there are a couple reasons I would not eject at that point. The first is, I have no idea if the pilot is ready to eject. So if he's troubleshooting the problem, as he just told me he was, and he's heads down looking at a gauge or his telelight panel or searching for a circuit breaker, and I initiate ejection, he could sustain severe damage to his neck or back. The second reason is in the back of the F-14, I didn't have engine instruments. I had a fuel totalizer. I could see the stall warning lights over his shoulder I had an airspeed indicator, so if we were slowing down, I would know, and I'd also feel it. But if he's saying, I'm troubleshooting an engine problem, my move is to find my pocket checklist, find the appropriate engine malfunction steps, and start to back him up. So I think in the case of the MiG-23, the pilot-rated observer's experience, and maybe his perceived situational awareness based on the gauges he saw, was a liability and mitigated good crew coordination. I do not want to get ahead of the facts or prejudge the conduct of the crew, but based on the wording in this report, that's the way it strikes me. We'll keep our eye on this situation as follow-on reports are released, so if you're not a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.